Hello, I'm Bella May. Welcome to my channel. Today's video is a little different than usual because it has me using heavy duty staples and wood, but it is still related to sewing. It's just a little craft project for my sewing room. And what I'm talking about is this huge ironing board. It is gonna be so nice. I've just made it and I am going to take you along on how I made it. So first of all, you might be thinking, why would you want an ironing board like this? You don't have a skinny round edge. You do use that end of that regular ironing board sometimes and it does come in handy. But there are other tools that you can use to get that same idea of that round skinnier part of the ironing board and then have a larger base such as this that you can use for your regular ironing needs, such as ironing a large piece of fabric, which is gonna be so nice with this huge ironing board, and other things that a regular ironing board is just too small for. The other tools that you'll need to get if you make an ironing board like this to replace your old one are these tools here. Even if you use a regular ironing board, these are very important ironing tools to have around. The main reason is you can iron along curves and such with the pressing ham, and then this fits nicely in skinny areas such as a sleeve or something, and both of these tools are so handy. I've had these for a few years now, and I've been using them with my regular ironing board. But there is this sleeve board, is what it's called, and this will replace that skinny small end of a regular ironing board. That is probably the biggest drawback to making such a huge ironing board such as this, is you don't get that round end. But if you buy one of these, then you don't have to worry about that and now you can both get those smaller areas of a bodice that you maybe drape over that edge or whatever. But then you also have a very nice large surface to iron everything on. And I'm so excited about this because I don't know how many times I've ironed fabric, a large piece of fabric, and you have to do so much maneuvering of the fabric to get it ironed because the regular ironing board is probably a little over 12 inches wide and not very long until it starts tapering. Even with like a 42 inch width of a fabric, you sometimes have to iron one side and then iron the other and then you slowly roll it on that probably a little more than 12 inch surface but this board i won't have to do that i can lay my full 42 inches out not even just 42 inches i have it 60 inches wide and i have a 20 inch width that i can iron all at once so very very handy i can't wait to use it this will also be really helpful for those large pattern pieces, whether it's a skirt piece or just a large bodice piece. So anyways, this is gonna be very nice. I am planning to keep this on my very large cutting table and it will kind of be a permanent place that I can just quickly transfer fabric over to and iron on and then back to the cutting table area. But it will be removable, so if I need the whole width of the cutting table, I can just simply pick it up and slide it underneath because I have a slot down below that it fits in. And that will be also super handy to just slide my fabric from one place to another instead of bringing it over to my ironing board, which I guess I could set up right there too. But. So that will be very handy. But now that you kind of get the idea of why you might want a large ironing board like this, I'm gonna show you how to make one, or at least kind of walk you along the process that I made it. I'm not, I don't think there's a set way to make an ironing board, but this is the way that I decided to make it. And I wanted to take you along with me on this little not sewing journey, but still related to sewing. In this, there is a 60 by 20 inch piece of board, of wood. I grabbed a board from the workshop that my dad and brothers work in, and they cut it down for me. It's 60 by 20. After that, all I needed to do was cover it and staple that cover in place. So you will need a heavy duty stapler. I'm not talking a paper stapler. I'm talking a heavy duty one. I don't know if it's called a wood stapler. It probably is, but it's heavy duty. And I am using three eight inch staples. My board was just under a half inch thick 
and I also I wanted to make sure that the staples didn't have a chance to poke out on the right side because that would not be good for ironing surface. And then you will need a hammer. The reason for this is sometimes the staples don't go all the way into the wood and it's no longer like flush with the wood, it's kind of sticking out. And so I just used a hammer to bang those down because I really didn't want any sticking out fabric to catch on. But also when I have this down on my nice cutting table, I didn't want it to scratch and such. So I just wanted to make sure that all the staples were up, tucked, flush with the wood. And then you will need cotton batting. I got this kind on, I think it was fabric.com, and it is a cotton batting. Now, that is important. You don't want polyester batting because what you're gonna do is melt it when you iron on it. There are battings that are made specifically for ironing on, and they're made to retain heat and kind of reflect it back up into the fabric. I liked the idea of using a natural fiber over a plastic fiber, and so I just got cotton batting. I have three layers of this on here, and then there's a layer of cotton muslin. You'll need cotton batting and then also cotton muslin. I personally just used a muslin. Some people use a thicker fabric so that it holds up to wear and tear better. I felt like just a muslin would work for me and I wanted to make sure it was also a smooth surface because sometimes those thicker canvases or duck would not be as soft for ironing on. So I just chose a muslin, and if I end up having to replace it, it wouldn't be too much of a big deal. Depending on what size you want your ironing board to be, that's how much fabric you want. You need three times the size of this, and then one times the size of cotton muslin or whatever fabric you want to use. You could even use a printed fabric on here, but since I'm making videos and often take pictures of my in progress, I wanted a nice clean background, so that's why I chose white. So that's what you'll need. And then I've already talked about the staplers and a hammer, and that's basically it. Of course, you'll need scissors to cut things apart, but if you're a seamstress or even if you aren't, you'll have scissors that will work. Let's turn this over and I'll show you what it looks like on the back side uh, when it's done. And so I have three layers of batting, as I mentioned before, and I stapled the first layer on separately and I stopped it about an inch away from the edge and then the next two layers of batting I did together and I stopped about two and a half to three inches away from the edge. So I did that with the batting and then I put the fabric all the way up to here. And the main reason I did that is because I have a 36 inch wide fabric. I felt like leaving that salvage edge would be better in the longevity of this board so that there's no raw edge that could fray and such. So that's why I chose to go in so far and also, I didn't want the staples to stick into the batting again, because first of all, that makes the batting weaker, but also the staples wouldn't go as far into the wood. On top of that, the staples would stick up farther and there'd be a chance that when I have it right side up, that this, it would rest on the staples and thus scratch my wood table. So I thought having it farther in here where it's not on top of the batting would keep it from touching my under surface, so what the board is on. That's what I decided to do, and if you want to do it, great. So I think that's it. We're gonna start off with one layer of the batting, and I'm going to staple this first layer down by itself, and then I'll staple two layers of it together as the next layer. Here's my board. I'm slightly stretching this first layer more than I will the other layers because I really want to make sure it's tight against the wood and won't have any wrinkles. Once I have it laid out, I'm now going to cut around about two inches from the edge. It's about a half inch thick board and I want it to overlap about inch, inch and a half. So I'm going to do two inches around. see I didn't do it perfectly I just gauged it and that will do I'm gonna take my stapler and start stapling for the corners on this first layer I'm basically just gonna trim this extra fabric away I didn't go all the way close I'm just gonna slightly overlap them like so
Now that we've got the first layer on, we can go on to adding two more layers of the cotton batting. When layering these two pieces, I want to make sure that there's no wrinkles in them because that could really affect the smooth surface that an ironing board is supposed to have. This time I'm going to place the staples closer together so that there's not as much loose space in between. I can see that there's no wrinkles down there, so I'm going to go ahead and staple these edges. And then before I go on to this final edge, I'm gonna again turn it over, make sure it's all stretched, and then staple it in place. I'm gonna check this side. It looks like there's no wrinkles, but I'm going to make sure it's stretched enough because I do want a very taut surface. All right, I'm happy with that. And now we can staple this last edge. For these corners, I am going to leave all this bulk. And what I'll basically doing is creating a kind of a foot for the ironing board to sit on. And so it's not against the whole surface. It's more just on four corners. I'm gonna staple here and here to keep these corners nice and tight. And then I'm going to pull quite tight on these corners and spread it open like so. So I'm going to turn this over and grab my piece of muslin. Since this is the outer layer, I really want to make sure that there's no wrinkles and also it doesn't stretch like the batting does. So I don't have as much forgiveness in the fabric as the batting. So I want to make sure that there's no wrinkles and it's nice and tight. And now I'm gonna turn it over without messing that surface up. So I'm gonna staple this edge in, get that all secure, and then I'm gonna do my best to pull this edge to get it nice and taut on that upper surface. I'm going fairly close with the staples. I just wanna make sure that the fabric stays taut over the use that it get, will get. Sometimes my staple doesn't make the staple sink all the way into the wood. So I'm just gonna grab my hammer. Yes, it's a tiny little hammer. And I'm just gonna get those all the way down against the wood. There we go, that's much smoother and also less of a worry that it's gonna scratch my table. Just gonna check to make sure there's no major wrinkles. I'm gonna really make sure I pull tight as I staple this layer down because this is the important part. When I'm doing this edge, I also want to make sure I'm stretching this way, not just up, because when I go like this, you can still see some wrinkles along this edge. So I wanna make sure that I pull the fabric towards this edge. So it's also taut this way, not just this way. And as I'm pulling this, I'm lifting up on the board and just pulling in that direction. And now the moment of truth. Yay, I am happy with that. Now, now that we're gonna move on to the edges, I'm just gonna make sure the fabric is pulled that direction. On this edge, since it's a raw edge and not a salvage edge, I'm going to fold it about a half inch over. Now I can go on to folding this corner. I'm just gonna pull on this edge of the fabric and I'm gonna pull it tight under this edge. And I'm just pulling until this point is nice and tight and no wrinkles there. And I'm just gonna keep pushing that fabric there, okay. 
happy with that. I'm gonna just try to get a nice fold right there. And just keep. I'm getting some looseness here, so I'm actually just gonna rip the fabric away from this one staple and get it folded nice and smooth. All right, there you have the process of making the board. I hope it helps if you choose to make an oversized ironing board like this. Give this video a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel. Again, thanks for watching. Now go out into your own sewing corner or area or studio and learn, create, and inspire. Thank you.